Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. This is a piece of quarter inch brass, about six millimeters in diameter. Today's challenge is to make a big fuse out of this. Neck the entire center out of it down to about 1.2 millimeters all the way down. The only restriction to this, now this is going to drive the comments that you make and the suggestions that you suggest. The only condition here is you must clamp on this part in the area to be removed. You are not allowed to use the ends because the ends don't look like this. These are not the ends you are looking for. Let's say that they are ornate or they are a whole different configuration, then you cannot use them. You can only use the material in the center. The way I'm going to do that, I am going to, well, I already have, made a couple of little saw cut eighth inch pieces of aluminum. I'm going to clamp it down in a jig. I'm going to knock out three areas and before I remove this clamp I am going to put this clamp in place holding in those three areas take this one out and remove the areas that I just left behind so that ought to work very well to keep the entire center knocked out of this thing and planar throughout the cuts I'll flip it over when I flip it over I'm going to flip it over onto this piece of material here I'm going to locate that flat on that piece and I'm going to do exactly the same thing for the flip side so this should be a relatively quick operation. I would love to be able to use my little fancy clamps here, but they just won't cooperate as far as my little cheese board is concerned. So we're going to do it with aluminum, and we're going to take light cuts. If this is a heavy material or a tough material, it's going to be aggressive to cut the center out of it, then don't use aluminum because I can expect this to bend by the time I'm done. Before we get over the machine, I want to say thank you to everybody that's continued to support this channel. Uh, emotionally through emails through comments we just recently had our heads handed to us down here in some very inclement weather and the real heroes of that whole thing are the linemen that went out in the ice and snow and put our power back on so uh, nobody would freeze to death or lose all the food in their refrigerators so thank you to those guys god bless you and your families outstanding all right let's go set this thing up on the mill and watch it happen Two fifty diameter right now. We're going to neck it down to fifty thousandths. That's a hundred off of each side. It's about a six millimeter. We're going to go to about one point two five finish thickness. Three passes. For a job like this, I walk the cutter back and forth until I see the chips fly, and then I set my Z zero. I'm going to rough all three of these pockets out, leaving a five thou surface on the bottom and finish all three at the same time without any table movement and you can see if i hit the clamp right there it's no big deal these are aluminum clamps just if you hit those fingers don't make them too thin where they flex and you lose your grip when we go to the three prong clamp make sure that the clamp is registering right over center of the rod where you risk rolling the part or influencing it ever so slightly and that will give you ridges in between the clamping setups don't take the clamps off of one until you have the clamps in place on the other. Now I've got the part shifted out of the way so that the Allen key can spin freely and not hit the quill. I am putting the three finger clamp on here and like I said before make sure that the center of the clamp is right over the center of the rod or, or it will roll the part believe it or not. I mean even though it's already clamped down. And make sure the one is exceptionally tight before you unloosen the other one. I had to work that in there. And we're ready for the second side. Little camera shift here. Go to the other side so you can see what's going on. I'm going to knock off the two bosses that were left behind by the first clamping operation in exactly the same procedure that I used to form the three pockets that this clamp is seated in. I will rough them both down, leaving five thou on the bottom of each one. You see the table goes down a little bit here so I can rough this one out. And I will zero out my Z and finish both of those surfaces so I know that they are exactly on the same plane. Hitting the clamp assures 
that you have cleaned up the bosses. Part is comfortably flipped over, supported by a shim on the opposite side. I am not touching on the ends. I am only clamping in the area that will be removed. Taking this down to 1.25 millimeters, 50 thousandths. And the reason I am doing the ends first is because if there is any movement, I want to make sure that it is secure for the final operation and not jumping around. So I'm going to neck this down while it's thick for the best possible results. Yeah. As with any machining operation where you're going to end up with an extremely thin cross section or small diameter, always work from the outside towards the support material and that will keep the part from bouncing around, possibly leading to a step, a taper, a blown cutter or a failed part altogether. And this slot right there, I will come back at a later time and take about another 20 thousandths of an inch off the Y axis on that to line up the two surfaces just for visual. I know that some of you guys got some pretty good eyes and if I don't, I'm gonna hear about it. Did the same thing, I left five on each of the surfaces, gonna come back and clean them up and swap the clamps over and probably go to the other side of the table with the camera as well. So you can see what's going on. Now, as far as alignment is concerned between the two and three fingered clamps, you can expect better results on this side because you are banking on a flat surface. If there's any chance of a misalignment or the part rolling during clamp transfer, it's going to happen on the first side. So this should work out fairly well. Let's do it. Exactly in the same procedure as I used on all the other pockets, I am going to rough these out, leaving five thousandths on the bottom. And finish everything up all at one Z height. Now, for something like this, if you have a clamp right up against one of the internal surfaces, if you're going to dust the aluminum clamp, well, you can be sure that you are removing 100% of the boss that you left behind. This is the first side that was done. I hit it with a file when I was done and then give it a little scotch break kiss. This is the second side. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to take a flat, fine file. And float it in there, take all the cutter marks out, clean it up, and buff it. And you can see that that particular technique is pretty good for creating the part that you need to create while only holding in the area you need to hold. Jumping the clamps is definitely the way to go on a part like this. And I really don't see any other way. You can't hold on the outside. That is not fair. If I was allowed to hold on the outside, I'd go back to Mr. Faithful here. I love these things. I made these a long time ago. I got four of them. And you can just do almost exactly the same thing. Squeeze it in a vise this way. And just knock the center out. Flip it over. But, like I said, you can't hold on the outside because the outside is off limits. You only can hold on the inside. That's the way I would do it. Quick and dirty. Let me clean that up real quick, get a final shot, and we're out. With a little bit of filing and some scotch bright, we have achieved our goal. Now I'm going to be honest with you and tell you that that is 045, 046 thick. I did not use any type of registration device to do that. Just scrape the cutter across the top, and with brass, I tell you, you can lose a couple of thousands pretty quick. But there you go. I am very pleased with that result. That is what I call jumping the clamps, guys. It's uh, the only way I know how to do stuff like that, and it does allow you to only clamp where you're going to machine. All right? That's a big help for a lot of you guys out there that are going to need to do things like this, especially for the PM Research Drill Press components. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks again for all your support. Thank you for all the uh, positive responses to the new t-shirts. They are selling rapidly, and I am very flattered and grateful. Thank you all very much. Joe Pye, Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out.